guys, it's Julian, and today I'm super excited to be talking to you about how to make a full Repopulate Mars slash Solid Groove style minimal tech house track. We're going to be talking about that style that I've been talking about a lot recently here, you know, still super fat tech house, but just a little bit more minimal, a little bit simpler, and more nuanced. And yeah, I'm going to be walking you through how to make a full track in this style, the full arrangement, how to lay everything out, how to like actually, you know, make it kind of evolve over time rather than just having that same groove over and over. Because the truth is, you know, with these more minimal tracks, they're very simple. So it can be easy for it to get boring, but I'm going to show you guys how to keep it interesting. And yeah, as usual, you can get the full template with the full track. Samples, MIDI, presets, everything like that from this video is available right at the top of the description. You can also hear the full track arrangement there because in the intro, of course, that was just a preview. But the full track arrangement is right at the top of the description and you'll see it in this video. And yeah, let's get started. Alright, so here's the full track laid out. You can see we have our intro, sort of like the middle part here, and then the main break. And then the main outro drop and then the actual outro so you can see this is what the arrangement is going to look like and if you look you can see it's really like these main things up here go throughout the whole thing and then we have like these elements down here which you can see are a lot more just kind of like you know in one or two little places and then just having a lot of different ones so that's something that you want to keep in mind here it's like you know, this style of track is all about, like, setting up that main groove and then working with that over the arrangement of a track rather than having, like, you know, a bunch of different new percussion coming in every five seconds and, like, constantly changing out sounds. It's really just about setting up that one main, really, no pun intended, but solid groove and then, you know, just kind of working with that over the course of the track. And I'll also talk a little bit about actually, like, arranging your project file here. If you notice, we have it pretty neatly organized, where, like, you can see, so we start with the low-end stuff, and then we have, like, the stab, sort of like our main, like, melodic thing, and then we have the percussions and the hi-hats, and then we have the vocals, and then all down here is just all the effects. So if you organize your project like this, and you don't have to do it exactly like this, you know, you can put the effects along the top if you wanted to. You can put them anywhere, but if you organize it like this and kind of keep everything like in its own place like this, I think it's just going to make making an actual track a lot easier. Because again, like you can kind of like just focus on these things up here, you know, your main things, and then all this stuff down here is still going to be there, but we have all the main stuff in one spot and then all the background stuff in one spot. And the first thing up here is the low end. So we have our kick and our bass. Here's the bass line, so you can see it's a pretty simple bass, it's just this like kind of F minor sounding thing. And it's really about the contrast between the 16th notes here and then the 8th notes here and how you have that like kind of do 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 kind of faster thing and then it slows down with the do 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 do. You know, the bass line creates a lot of groove in a track like this, so you have to think of it in that way rather than just like, you know, creating some low end for the track. And the sound with this one is just made with two layers of operators. So we have a sub. You can see it's just two sine waves doing a bit of FM with a low pass filter, and we have a tiny envelope on that. And then the second one is more of like a mid range. Yeah, you can see it's just three sine waves. Here's without the low pass. And then with it, so it just adds that kind of like growly thing to the mid-range. And this layer is just as important as the sub, because obviously the sub is the main thing here, you know. This is just going to be this deep, fat, subby bass line. But this mid-range layer of sort of like this growl is going to add a lot as well, because that's what you're hearing, you know. That's what you can really like hear in the track, and you're going to be able to tell like... The bass is just a lot stronger when you have that, even though it might be super subtle. And we also have a high pass filter on just that layer to make it fit with the sub a bit better. And then on both of those, we have a bit of drum bus gluing them together and just making the bass a lot fatter. And then we have a compressor side chaining it to the kick and then this EQ8 which is just cutting out a little bit of room for the kick. And then on the actual kick itself, you can see the kick is actually dry. So it's just a nice fat kick. Which really comes down to, this is just a sample that I've layered here. So like it's already a really good kick and we just need to let it shine in the mix 
without having too much processing get in the way. And on the groove of those, we have a bit of saturation, just a tiny bit. There's without it though. And with it, so you can see why we have that. And then we have a high pass filter. And so this has two automations. It's automating to come on at a lot of different times, you can see there. And then I also have the frequency being automated, like in the break here. This just kind of makes it go away. Here. You know, it just makes the kick and bass disappear, basically. And then when this comes back, it's really, really powerful because you're getting the full bass again. So, yeah, the high pass filter is definitely an arrangement tool. Like, it's made for kind of, like I was saying in the intro, like, you know, taking this really repetitive kick and bass groove, but being able to build tension with it and being able to, like, kind of stretch it over the course of a track by having this little tiny variation just cutting out those frequencies below 100 hertz there. And yeah, then we have the piano stab. As you can see, it plays a pretty simple pattern. It's just the same repetitive one note. You know, it's kind of one of those things where, like, saying less is saying more, you know? By having less notes there, and just that one, and then just go down to the end. But just having that, you can hear, like, you know, it just makes a really solid, steady groove with this thing. Like, it's not meant to be that melodic. It's really meant to be more of like a percussion that is also fitting into the key. And so that's just going through a bit of echo, which you can see is pretty slow. It's on quarter notes. And then we have the drum bus here, which is on the medium setting. And the compressor is actually pretty important. Because like how you really hear that delay and it's really like part of the groove with this sound. If I turn that off, the delay doesn't come through as much. So the compression is just really good for kind of making that echo have an even space with the main sound. And then there's this frequency shifter and this reverb, which are both just being automated in some different parts. So really the frequency shifter just does it that one time at the end of that break there. Yeah, it just kind of makes it like disappear a bit there, makes it a bit more obscured. Just gives us some variation there. And then the reverb automation, you can see that, that's just kind of washing it out. And then you can see we have this being side chained just to the kick. I have a low pass filter which is just bringing it in and out at some different times. And then we have a high pass filter to cut out the low end, make sure this isn't going to get in the way of any of the other sounds. And that's it for the piano stab. And then we have these percussions. Which you can hear, these are actually pretty organic sounding. So that's what you want for this style. You know, these more mid rangey, like kind of crunchy percussions like this. I have these two here. This live percussion, which is a bit lower. And gives us a very steady groove. You know, because you're every time getting that... And we have, like, this one. Which if I play with the kick, you can hear that's just... You can hear that's doing a bit of call and response with that bonus percussion with the drum rack. And the last one we have in here is the screech. And that just kind of creates like a cool sound in there because you get that like... You know, it's like a sound effect. But it's also percussive. And that's just going through a high pass filter and a side chain and then on the group of those percussions we just have a little bit of saturation a high pass filter there and this washout actually isn't doing anything but then we just have this low pass filter here for the break to just to disappear <laughs> you 
And that's the percussions. And then we have our main like clap snare. Which are just outside of the percussion group because I wanted them to kind of be on their own. You know, it keeps it a little bit simpler. And yeah, you can hear what that's doing. It's just a spat. <laughs> on the two and four, and then that little one just in between. Then we have our hi-hats, which starts with the main hi-hat. So this is the very standard, sort of like minimal tech house hi-hat. You know, it's not going to be a big, shh, like long hi-hat like you would have in techno or more standard styles of house. It's going to be this kind of shorter, more mid-rangey, just very punchy hi-hat like this. And so this one is two layers. That's essentially how you're going to make this sound is with layering. We have this one. Which gives us more of the high end, you can see I've shortened that. And this one, which is more just like the in the mid range. And then you put them together and you get this very punchy hi hat. And this is important because you need this to be kind of in the same level of punchiness as the kick and the snare. Like, if you hear that? You know, you can't have a big dunk, dunk, and then have just a little. You know, you really need a big, full <laughs> So that I can contend with the other drums like that. And I just have a bit of a high pass, or a bit of a high-end boost on that. And then this hi-hat underneath that, it's actually just hi-hat too. So it's this one from that stack. But it's just, just that one hi-hat. So it's a little bit smaller in the intro, because you get like... You don't even really notice it because it is, in theory, a very similar hi-hat. But you just get like a much more impactful feeling where like you're used to this one hi-hat which is sitting in the mix nicely. But then you get here and all of a sudden. You know, it's a lot fatter. So kind of a nice technique there. And then this group of hi-hats, we have a tambourine. Which is just these two little samples inside of a drum rack here. Excuse me, guys. We have this live house loop as well. Which you can hear has a bit of a stop and start dynamic. You know, it's like a... And that's really important for the group. If I turn that off... You know, it's not the same without that stop and start thing happening. And then just the shaker down here. And then the group of those that watch out isn't doing anything either. But we actually just have a low pass filter. So yeah, it's just kind of similar to the one you saw on the percussion in the break there. Just makes them kind of disappear a bit. Then we have the vocals. So these are the style of vocals that you'll typically hear in these tracks, you know, it's a lot of these like, you know, more kind of like female, like, choir vocals. And it's just like a simple riff like that that's really catchy, that's repetitive, that you can easily kind of like hear and hum along to, but also like you know that this is this track when you hear it, you know, like that. Like as soon as you hear that, it's like. I know what's about to happen. You know, that's essentially what this is. It's kind of working as like the logo for the track, so to speak. And then these other vocals are just more like, like one shots like that. So it's that contrast where we have that main one that goes pretty repetitive, but then these ones in between to still fill it out so that you don't just have like huge blind spaces with nothing happening. Aside from the main groove. And then for effects on those, it's just a bit of echo and some reverb and some drum bus. I've got a high pass filter and then it's being side chained to the kick. And yeah, that's the vocals. Again, like it's just about getting a nice vocal and then giving it some space with the effects. And speaking of effects, then we have all these effects down here. So you can see the first one is this brass drone.
So yeah, this is just like that nice deep like. Hmm. Yeah, it seems like it's kind of a uh, thing that's easy to overlook, but if I turn it off, yeah, there's something missing. Not having that like strong like foundation underneath everything. So. Nice Louis Armstrong voice there. So yeah, so the way this is being made is it's actually a wavetable patch. So we have a saw wave, and then we have this wavetable here. It's this freak under the distortion wavetables. It's an octave down. You can see I have it, the warp being modulated on there, as well as the wavetable position and the low pass filter is being modulated. We're also automating that low pass just to go up and down here and then it just kind of disappears at the end. And then we have some unison and that's really it for inside of the synth. So it's a pretty simple synth sound. You just want a lot of harmonic content. And then I just have some chorus. I have this utility here which is what brings it in and out. You know that just kind of makes it kind of fade in more smoothly. Just kind of coming into your track like that. And then it disappears again. And then we just have some reverb, a bit of drum bus, which is important for fattening the sound up. I have a high pass filter, which is also automating on the end there. I have another nice way to make that disappear. And then we have this auto pin, which is just making it sound like it's being side chained to the kick. And yeah, and then after that, the effects are a lot simpler, actually. You can see, like, we have a noise sweep, so it's just some white noise. The bandpass filter and some reverb. We have a 909 snare. You know, your standard, like. You see, there's a little high pass automation on that. There's also this build clap, which kind of backs that up. And this one here, too. So, kind of having like two of those happening at once where you have your steady. That's just getting louder, but then there's like a do 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 you know like some kind of cool fill snare like that. You can get like a nice contrast with that. There's also this one. In terms of other effects, there's another noise sweep down here. Just some white noise with a band pass. This one has this auto pan, which is just like. Kind of slowing down there, so you get that cool like <laughs> kind of like effect, and just some reverb and a high pass filter on that. The other effects are pretty simple. Like we have this little like just short. That's just some white noise with a band pass, and I have the four bit shaper on that. We have like this short crash here as well, which does these little like. Yeah, just lots of little stuff to keep it exciting. This laser sound. You know, these effects are what's going to kind of like grab the track and kind of carry it along. So you have to think of it like that. And yeah, it's just kind of like bringing the track to life and making it so that this very simple groove can work over the course of five or six or seven minutes or however long your track is going to be. And that's what the effects are going to do. And yeah. gonna be it for this one guys i hope you enjoyed as always make sure to like this video as well as subscribe and let me know what you think in this video in the comments let me see which style you want me to make a full track in next as usual you can get the full project file samples midi presets everything like that from this video is available right in the top of the description this is a really great way to help support me you know with these videos i don't make a whole lot just off of youtube but with the sample packs and these templates and you know different things like this custom tutorials and ghost productions 
I might want to keep going and keep bringing you guys new videos every single day and teaching you stuff that isn't out there on the internet. There's nobody else making full track tutorials like this in this particular style out there and I love to keep bringing them to you guys. So definitely consider supporting this plus you get a great template and samples and MIDI and presets that are really better than almost anything else out there I think. And yeah, so thank you so much for the support guys and I will see you tomorrow with another video.